Ed Forbes. I was born in San Diego, actually, in July of 1950, Balboa Naval Hospital. My father was in the Navy, and later in the interview, we'll talk a little bit about, uh, about him. Uh, him being in the Navy, we spent some time moving around, lived on the East Coast, came to the West Coast, came back to San Diego, went to Seattle, and went to Hawaii, lived in Hawaii for 10 years, then came back to San Diego. I started uh, high school in Hawaii, Damien Boys High School, it's now Boys and Girls High School. Uh, I transferred back here from Hawaii, I went to St. Augustine High School in San Diego, and my parents bought a house right across the street from Crawford High School in East San Diego. So instead of having to get up and take a bus 10 miles to and from every day, uh, I convinced my parents to let me go to that high school right across the street, which was Crawford. So therefore, I went to three different high schools and to this day have absolutely no high school buddies. I, when I was in high school, uh, in my government class, we had a San Diego police officer come and talk about law enforcement. Piqued my interest. I was able to secure a, actually a paid job called police intern with the city of El Cajon. Uh, on, my, on my 21st birthday, uh, I sat down for my hiring interview for police officer with uh, El Cajon. I spent uh, 32 years with El Cajon. I was uh, 10 years an officer, 12 years a sergeant, and 10 years as a lieutenant. Uh, with my service there, I met a lot of people from other law enforcement organizations, and <clears throat> I met a couple of them, well, I knew them for, a, a bunch of them for a long time from the, from the sheriff's office, and I ultimately met uh, and worked with uh, uh, Danny Goodrich and Bob Scanlon. Uh, they were with the Narcotics Task Force, but also Bill Sullivan, who was a member of the Friendly Sons, uh, was a member of the Narcotics Task Force. This was in the late 70s. I remember uh, Bill Sullivan talking about the Friendly Sons back then, uh, but I never really looked into it. Uh, over the years, I remained good friends and had a travel group, traveled with these other guys, and uh, went on a number of trips with Bill Sullivan. And ultimately, Bill Sullivan and uh, Pat Connors recruited me into the Friendly Sons in 1993. At the time, Chuck Fox was uh, the, the president. I recall going to my first lunch, and actually it was before I was a member, I got a call from, I think it was Sullivan, and said, hey, why don't you come to this lunch and you can see what the Friendly Sons are all about. And I said, okay. And I don't recall if I asked him what the dress code was, but I'm, but I'm pretty sure he didn't tell me what the dress code was. So my very first luncheon, I walked in wearing like a long sleeve camping t-shirt, uh, button-down shirt, Levi's, and hiking boots. And yes, I felt really out of place. <laughs> but it was a good luncheon, and I remember that I, I believe I got the application to join, uh, and I met uh, Skip and Toby uh, Giesting. At the time, Toby was uh, uh, the den mother then. She was the uh, executive assistant, or I forget what her, her, her title was, but was really welcomed into the uh, organization. It was a couple years after that that my father also joined the organization. And again, joined mainly you know, for being Irish. To, to, uh, I thought at the time to help celebrate our Irish heritage, uh, I found out that, yeah, the Friendly Sons are about Irish heritage, but they're also about partying and drinking and having a, uh, a, a good time. 